Well, hello everyone. My name is Eric Becker and I'm with West Coast Bias Sports and I am in front of the Alamo in San Antonio, Texas. I'm here to cover the Los Angeles Dodgers playing the Texas Rangers for Big League Weekend at the Alamo Dome. And uh, it's an exciting two game set that uh, they do here once a year in San Antonio. It's always the Rangers as the host team and this year the Dodgers who do have quite a bit of history in the San Antonio area uh, having had their AA affiliate uh, here for a number of years. Uh, you know it's, it's a good fit so uh, we've got quite a bit for you. We're gonna have some uh, game footage, we're gonna have some interviews and uh, maybe a couple of other goodies. So uh, sit back and relax and enjoy the show. And uh, a little festivity going on here. Game. Brief stop. This is the uh, promenade on the north side. And uh, as you can see, the merch booth features both Dodgers and Rangers here. Or the Dodgers tweet here. And, uh, and, uh, right All right, field level now at the Alamo Dome. Normally a football style stadium. We also have rodeo events here, and actually, this group's been here for a while. Decks. Sort of a break right there. Right here with the high note plate. It's 275 down the right field line. 330 sort of in the power alley there. I don't see a center field dimension, but then it's 360 to left center, 350 to close to the left field line. Definitely not your typical dimensions. It should be an interesting. And the Dodgers are taking a little batting practice right now. Where did you get the bat They were handing them out out front. Just to point out another interesting anomaly. Uh, well, first off, here's the bullpen down the right field line. Uh, the Rangers dugout is right over there behind first base. The Dodgers dugout is behind. Uh, sorry, that's behind first base. The Dodgers dugout is behind third base. Um, right now, you, yeah, you can kind of see the sign. But notice that the seating does not come down to the field. Oh, there it goes one over my head. I think it landed up there in the third deck, but I think it was just foul. <laughs> that was exciting, but yeah, I'm sitting by the 275 right now. You can see the, the dimensions are not your normal major league dimensions by any stretch of the imagination. Alright, now I'm here with Kelly Patton down the uh, left field line at the Alamo Dome. Kelly, uh, where are you from originally? Originally from San Dimas. You're originally from San Dimas, and now you live here in San Antonio, is that correct? Yes, sir. And uh, have you been to Big League Weekend before, or is this your first time? First time. First and year in San Antonio. First year in San Antonio when the Dodgers decided they were going to follow you out. So, uh, hope, hopefully. <laughs> so how long have you been a Dodger fan? Since I was in the womb. Third generation Dodger fan, both sides of the family. I, I'm a fourth generation, so I know how that goes. It's, uh, it, it's kind of born into your blood, and you, you carry it with you, so completely understood. Uh, what do you think about the dimensions of the ballpark? I, 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 we were kind of talking a little bit. I, I kind of was comparing this to um, a clown car last night, like a clown car ballpark. So we were calling it th today a uh, 
like an arena football equivalent of, of baseball stadiums. Uh, but what do you think about the dimensions as far as how they impact the game? And, it's like uh, a micro machine for a baseball stadium, like a ghetto indoor sandlot. It does kind of have that feel to it. I'm just going to kind of pan around here to give people the impression. Uh, I mean, normally this is a, a football stadium, obviously, and they also hold conventions here, I believe. It's basketball as well. <laughs> um, you know, a couple of people back home were asking this question, so I'll, I'll put it on you, because obviously you're kind of in Rangers territory here, although there is a, a decent Dodger contingent because... And, and Astros. And Astros contingent. Designated hitter or no designated hitter? What do you think? No designated hitter. The designated keep, hitter. Keep it OG. Keep it OG. I like the sound of that. And uh, as far as what the you expect the Dodgers to do this year, I mean, obviously you were a big Matt Kemp fan. Uh, it's well documented. Um, but we went ahead and we made that trade. We got Grandal, we brought in Rollins, we brought in Kendrick, and uh, brought in a whole bunch of bullpen guys to compete. What do you think about this season? And where, where, do you, where do you see this team going? 97 wins. 97 wins? Oh, yeah. Well, it's not. We, we got some opportunities, but we definitely need to uh, improve our postseason. But uh, with, with the ability to get on base and, you know, if we can get some timely hitting, we're going to be good. What gets this team over the top, do you think? The bullpen. The additions, Peralta. Some good pieces of the bullpen. And obviously the bullpen was a huge factor in uh, why things went downhill last year in the postseason. So if the bullpen is stronger, you think this team gets over the top. They get to the World Series and maybe even take it all. I'm 100% pro Paco. <laughs> team Paco. I like that. I like that. And uh, were you here last night for game one? I was, I was getting ready for work. Getting ready for work. But obviously you were able to watch the game out here. Uh, what did you think about some of the uh, home runs uh, in this fan box? I think Jock made a great impression. His swing looks beautiful. He's ready to go. I know a lot of people are out there, big Dre fans, but Dre, Dre's got to go. He's got to be traded. He's going to be the next clubhouse cancer. And uh, obviously down the left field side here is a little bit more of a realistic major league dimension. Which is where he hit it, and he hit it deep. He hit it deep, opposite field jack, and uh, this place was re really rocking last night. When and there was a lot of Dodger fans, I noticed. There, there are a lot of Dodger fans. There's even an old school Piazza Dodger fan sitting right down there. <laughs> I see a couple old school jerseys. Anyway, Kelly, thanks for taking the time with us. And uh, do you have any parting thoughts? Hey, go Dodgers. Go Dodgers. Kelly Patton, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a big hand for the Joint Base San Antonio Repel Team with personnel from the Defense Medical Readiness Training Camp out of Camp Bullets and United States Army North out of Fort Sam Houston. Also, that group is the Military Working Dog Team from Delta Company, Military Police Battalion out of Black Air Force Base, and the dog's name is Ben. Ladies and gentlemen, with a ceremony of first pitch, five-time All-Star, Jeff Pitt. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. The battery for the Rangers, the catcher, number three, Carlos Corcoran. On the mound for the Rangers, number 63, Anthony Bats. Los Angeles Dodgers coaching at first base number 13, John Ballinan. Coaching at third base number 49, Lorenzo Bundy. Lending off for Los Angeles, the center fielder number 31, Jock Peterson.
Rangers got the guy popped the ball up, hit it off that scoreboard, and it landed in uh, shallow right field. Should have been in a uh, routine pop up, but it uh, was anything but. The third out of the inning, and we're finally going to the second here in San Antonio with the Dodgers leading the Rangers eight to two. Dodgers and let's go Rangers. Uh, it's uh, definitely a Rangers tilting crowd, but a good number of Dodger fans in the house. Uh, San Antonio, obviously, a double affiliate of the Dodgers for a number of years. Uh, now the uh, missions. Um, so there is uh, quite a contingency of Dodger fans in San Antonio tonight, and uh, they're making some noise. Not quite as much as Rangers fans, but uh, pretty good considering we're in. Rangers country. So we've got a uh, one-two count on Adrian Gonzalez, one out in the top of the fourth inning. Dodgers leading the Rangers eight to four. Let's see what happens here. Gonzalez shops one to second, and that will be the second out of the inning. Now they are throwing the rise into a uh, box. Apparently the monster uh, Okay, time is up for the contest. We have point flip and anyone in point flip, he gets the draw. 
from the bonus ride. He makes the bonus ride in Flutterburger for an entire year. That guy got burgers for a year on the line. And by the way, I want to keep in mind that the Texas Rangers are the hosting team here. So that's why you are seeing Rangers associated with stuff throughout the field. But uh, this is definitely not the Rangers on the ballpark. Ladies and gentlemen, your kids are coming in the for the Rangers number 65, Ross Wolf. Ross Wolf, number 65, Blue Rangers. Dodgers with uh, quite a bit of power here in Texas tonight. Uh, they'll be playing again tomorrow, a 105 start uh, locally. Zach Granke will be pitching. So here we are, a 1 0 count, two outs, bottom nine. There's another one. Minority but very vocal Dodger crowd stands in applause. Final score from the Alamo Dome Dodgers 11, Rangers 6. We'll be back for game two. Just a little uh, shot of the San Antonio nightlife here on the Riverwalk. <laughs> something special I'd like to share with everybody. 
Uh, while I'm not here, I've had the pleasure of visiting with Gabby Traxler, who was the wife of Brian Traxler, who unfortunately left us back in 2004. But Brian was a uh, perennial fan favorite at uh, Albuquerque back when uh, they were the Dukes uh, in the late 80s and uh, through the mid 90s even. And uh, this little goodie right here is his first hit ball. And uh, if you can read there, first hit double against Dennis Martinez of the Montreal Expos. Pretty good pitcher in his time. That's May 10th, 1990. And right down here on the bottom shelf, this is a, a little figurine of him when he was playing uh, in 1994 in Japan. Sorry about the shadow there. But just a, a really cool little uh, bit of history. This was uh, Brian's only major league hit, um, but just a, a real special memory to, to share here while I'm in San Antonio. Um, you know, the man uh, played with some really great players, Piazza, Kiros, Mondesi, saw them all come through the system and, uh, you know, got a chance to get a hit at the uh, big league level. So there you have it. Well, it's raining in San Antonio, but it's baseball weather in the Dome. We will be coming to you live, well, not live in your time, but live in our time, from the Alamo Dome here in San Antonio, Texas, for game two of the Major League Baseball weekend, Big League weekend, between the Dodgers and the Texas Rangers. Dodgers won last night by a final score of 11 to six. About an hour before first pitch and the concourse at the Alamo Dome is absolutely bustling today. Uh, looks like we might have an even bigger crowd inside the dome today than we did uh, last night when a little over 20,000 showed up, which uh, I'm told for a rainy Friday night in San Antonio when the Spurs are playing is pretty good. So right now I am walking over to meet with a uh, California transplant uh, who is here at the game today. Seems Kelly Padden will be talking to him briefly in just a few minutes here. But I uh, just wanted to kind of give people a view of uh, the, all the activity going on here at the Alamo Dome today. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me according to regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the newest members of your United States Air Force. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a Grammy-nominated and platinum recording artist, Frankie J. We invite you to join in singing with Frankie J as he honors America with the singing of our national anthem. Whose bright stripes and bright stars 
Gonzalez, who is an LA area transplant, actually. Sylvia, how long have you been in San Antonio? Seven years next month. Seven years next month. And uh, is this the first time that you've been to Big League Weekend? First time, yeah. Um, they had the Padres first year and then the Astros last year. But this and, was the time to come. And this year, finally, the Dodgers come out. Finally, yeah. Wow. We're plotting something right yeah. now. <laughs> now, the Dodgers, though, have had a long time kind of presence in the city. Uh, what's kind of your experience with that? Uh, well, there are actually a lot of Dodger fans here. Um, I met two last night that were about my age um, and then their father. They grew up Dodger fans because of the missions. So there's, there's a huge tie-in even. Uh, folks that work for the missions are Dodger fans, so it's kind of... So a lot, a lot of Dodger fandom in the city. A lot. Now, yeah. other than the Dodgers, so obviously, you know, for, for this being Texas, have a pretty strong base. What do you see? Do you see more of a Rangers fan base, an Astros fan base? What, what is normal in San Antonio if I, you're not a Dodger I fan? I would say Rangers, um, especially since they were good. Uh, they've been better for a few years. Um, not so much the Astros. Mostly all the gear you see is Rangers and not diehards, but at least they root for the Rangers. So more of a Rangers leading town, which is kind of indicated in the crowd today. I'd say exactly. it's like last night, it's about 70-30 right. maybe on the split, but uh, you know, good contingency of Dodger fans for you know this being yeah. a thousand miles from uh, Dodger Stadium. Uh, and just a question we ask, because obviously the two closest teams are now American <laughs> League teams. Yes. Designated hitter or no designated hitter? What's your opinion? No DH. No DH. No DH. I am uh, I'm a purist. Baseball purist. <laughs> and, and as far as you know, during the regular season, what is the baseball season like? What's it like to say go to a missions game? It's awesome. And people that haven't been, locals that haven't been, are missing out. Um, it's it's like going to Dodger Stadium, and it's a big family. It's like that at the missions games, and it's really upsetting that. The stadium is so far south that locals don't really go down there, and that's the thing about San Antonio is that you they stick to one part of the city and they don't travel, and they're really missing out. So, so maybe if they built something a little bit more centralized, do you think that might expand some of their following? Definitely, because people don't want to go down there. They they, they are I want to say afraid, but it's kind of not populated down there. So if it were downtown. Um, so yeah, so if they uh, if they built a stadium downtown, I think that would attract a lot more people to the games. You know, obviously the, the missions are now a Padres affiliate. The Dodgers just gained a Double A affiliate in Tulsa, and uh, I, it's my understanding that the uh, Tulsa Drillers will be here for the missions opening day this year. Yes, yep, I got my tickets. I'm gonna wear my Dodger gear. <laughs> Should, should be a pretty good uh, turnout, I would think, for at least for opening day. It should be, um, especially because there's so many Dodger fans here. And, I mean, we'll see. We'll, uh, I don't know how educated Dodger fans are here uh, or diehard. Um, I know the ones that I know are pretty diehard, and, and everybody's set to go. And uh, what, one other question that I have, that I, yeah, this is what I've been asking everyone. What do you think about these wacky dimensions? 275 down the right field line here. It's crazy. It's... Um, it's a little wacky, but you know what? It, the, the the shorter distance here, you can see in the right field, it creates an excitement, and I think that's good because it gives uh, fans in San Antonio um, more of a of a chance to see home runs that you don't see every day in well, games. The Dodgers had five last night. Yes, they They've did. already got one today. Uh, <laughs> and we're only in the top of the third inning. And I'm not complaining about it. <laughs> <laughs> it does add to some little excitement. Yes. Sylvia, thanks for taking the time with us. Do you have any parting words? Go Dodgers. <laughs> Go Dodgers. Thank you for the time. Now in game two, Dodgers leading 3 nothing, top of the third. Justin Turner just a moment ago hit one out. Adrian Gonzalez coming to the plate. Gentlemen, would just sit down. There we go. And yeah, maybe not. I'm just gonna have to. Uh...
moment. There he goes, trying to round the bases. Uh, going so slow that I can actually zoom in on him as he comes up to home plate. Aegon, not a speed demon, and his trot uh, shows it. Solo blast for Gonzalez. Well, he overheated it. The wave is here in San Antonio. Dodgers, 11 runs on the day, home runs from P.K. Hernandez, Justin Turner, two for Adrian Gonzalez, and one for Buck Britton, a three-run blast. The Rangers with a three-run home run. In total, the Dodgers have scored 22 runs, and the teams have combined for 15 home runs in this two-game set with these quirky dimensions. And now it's down to one strike.